48 hours ago, I was just exposed to COVID. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing to my body right now to try to make sure that I don't break with the illness or that if I do, I position my body to be in the best possible place to get through it and get back to being healthy. Over the past three years, I've been 100% successful at avoiding any communicable diseases. If you'd like to know what I do to achieve that track record, stick around. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and this might be the last time that you see me for a little while because we just again got exposed potentially to COVID. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that from the very beginning of COVID, I took more of a DIY approach to uh, avoiding getting it, and so far it's been 100% effective, but that doesn't mean that we haven't been without risk vectors coming into our house. Specifically, my boy's mother is one of those people that believes, or prior to COVID, understood that viruses were real, but once COVID came out and it became inconvenient to believe in viruses, she's one of these people that felt that viruses weren't real anymore. Uh, as a result, she's gotten COVID twice and I just found out 48 hours ago that she's broken with it again. She was over visiting with River over on Wednesday. I'm uh, time of this recording. I'm uh, 24 or 72 hours after that. So we're right in the window where we, we might be getting it. Now, there are things that we do when she comes here. Uh, we run air filters and things like that. We used to be a lot more, uh, you know, uh, hard assed about it uh, back a couple of years ago when it was popular and it was socially acceptable in our culture to try to avoid getting COVID. Uh, you know, I could be a little bit more of a hard ass. It was like, yeah, if we're gonna get together, let's get together outside. But since our culture has changed and now it's more of the social norm to just you know keep the economy going and you know everybody just get sick uh, it's been a little bit harder so uh, you know our ability to protect ourselves has gone down so uh, this time we're a little bit more concerned that we might uh, you know finally have gotten COVID ourselves what I want to talk about in this video is what we're doing right now to try to uh, you know if we were exposed to try to a reduce our chances of actually breaking with it and B uh, try to make it uh, such that if we do break with COVID that our experience with it is is lovely as it possibly can be. I'm not a medical doctor, though I have been 100% successful at doing something that many medical doctors have failed at doing themselves. So I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you what I do myself that has worked so far over the past three years since COVID has been out at 100% success rate. You can decide whether anything that I'm saying is of any value to you, but uh, the only way that you can really criticize what I'm saying here is to listen to it first. So this is what I do when I feel that I have the potential that I might've been exposed to something things that I do to try to prevent possibly breaking with it, or if I get it, make my experience with it that much less terrible. So the first thing that I do, and I have found in the past, you know, years prior to COVID, that this was really successful at preventing colds and flus. Uh, whenever I felt that I was exposed to somebody that, uh, you know, might have, uh, exposed me to you know something what i would do is i would use garlic raw garlic and the way that i would uh, take raw garlic is i would take some strongly flavored juice this is uh, grapefruit juice in this case I put some grapefruit juice in my mouth or you know whatever strongly flavored, flavored juice I might want to use. Water would not be a good idea. You know, you'll see what I'm going to do in, in a moment. Uh, but you know some kind of a, a strongly flavored juice seems to work pretty well. I'm going to put it in my mouth and then I'm going to uh, put the garlic in my mouth and start kind of shaving off little bits of garlic and you know not necessarily chewing it, although chewing it would be beneficial, um, but like breaking it into lots of little tiny pieces and then swallowing it. And you can watch me do that right now with this one. So grapefruit juice first and then shave these guys off. All right, so I shaved off about like, I don't know, a quarter inch of it or so, and then I would just repeat that. Again, I've got about a third of the garlic uh, done at this point. So that's one thing that I would do in the past. 
Uh, well, my, my regular interaction with seasonal uh, illness was that every single year I would get at least one or two, sometimes three, you know, colds or flus or things like that. I, you know, I would work out in the public, I'd constantly be, you know, getting exposed to things. And I just was one of these people, like many of us, that took it for granted that during cold and flu season, you get colds and flus. It's not uh, a discretionary thing that you can choose. Over the past several years uh, with COVID, I've learned that it actually is discretionary. There are things you can do to completely avoid getting communicable diseases, and we've been doing that. Again, with 100% success rate, possibly until now. Uh, and in the past, the only year that I can recall where I did not get a cold or a flu was a year when I did that religiously. Every time I went out, I was working. Uh, you know, in the morning, I would do the garlic. And then when I got home, I would do the garlic. Now, there is an argument to be made that maybe because I smelled like garlic, people were staying away from me. I don't care why it worked. It definitely worked. And I don't think that that is actually it because the way that I was working with people, I'm a camera operator, people around me, it might have irritated them that I smelled like garlic, but it's a, people certainly weren't keeping their distance. It seems like through that one experience that I had, like it works really well and I keep it up. And the worst case scenario is that it doesn't do anything. And all I just did was get some fresh vegetable into my body which is a good thing also. The other thing that I do, and this is something recently that I picked up, and actually it is a, a tip that came from uh, you know, River's mother. So she uh, might've given us COVID, but she also gives me occasionally some good ideas. And this is something that she came up with, is taking some tea, this is green tea. And what I'm gonna do is put a Ricola cough drop into it. Uh, these cough drops have all sorts of herbs that are good for soothing the throat, but also boosting the immune system. I'm going to pop that right in the, there. Uh, this was just recently boiling, so I'm not going to show you what it's like to drink tea on camera. You can kind of just visualize that, imagine it on your own. Uh, but I let the uh, cough drop uh, just dissolve in there. And in addition to, um, you know, potentially uh, kind of helping my throat, uh, it is uh, kind of, it's kind of tasty too. I don't ever put any sugar in my tea, but it does add a little bit of sweetness. In terms of vitamins, what I'm doing, uh, you know, specifically for COVID, and also I think it's probably applicable for other colds, is that I'm taking vitamin D on a regular basis. I take 5,000 units, uh, daily units of uh, vitamin D every day. Uh, since I've realized that I have the potential of being exposed to COVID, I've doubled that. So I'm up to 10,000 per day. Uh, that's a little on the high side. You, uh, as I understand it, you don't want to kind of continue it for that um, at that level for an, an enormous amount of time. But as a prophylactic during this uh, short time period, I've been doing that. We're also doing zinc. I'm, uh, that's something that I do, uh, you know, religiously every day. Uh, you know, I'm always taking my vitamin D, always taking my zinc, uh, you know, especially in the cold, uh, during the cold and flu season with vitamin D because your body will manufacture vitamin D when there's a sunlight and it's summertime and you have a lot of skin exposed. But here in the Northern, uh, uh, climates where we're covered up during uh, most of the winter, we're not making vitamin D. And vitamin D has been uh, implicated in being something that can really benefit you if you have proper levels of it. The US military uh, just concluded a very large study of about a million different uh, you know, uh, service uh, men and women. And uh, their conclusion was that if you had proper or uh, slightly elevated vitamin D levels, you were 30% less likely to contract COVID. Uh, the, the, sp the study was specifically about COVID, but I think it's easy to kind of extrapolate that to other, at least other colds uh, that, you know, having proper vitamin D levels is going to be something that's going to help you. So vitamin D, Zinc is something that I'm doing. I'm uh, keeping up with my daily multivitam multivitamins and also vitamin D. So those are the things that I've been doing, uh, you know, since I felt like I might've had an exposure. I, I don't know because, uh, you know, we do run air filters whenever, uh, you know, River's mom comes here. So it's, you know, maybe we got it, maybe we didn't get it. Uh, you know, at the moment is, it's my understanding that the current strains of COVID are the most uh, infectious uh, diseases that people have ever encountered before. Uh, when people get it and they're shedding virus, they just shed an enormous amount of virus and it has a, you know, a reasonably high R0 value because of that. And uh, you know, I, I, I don't really know. I might be harboring it right now, I might not be, but all the things that I'm doing are going to be beneficial either way because I'm taking fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables, I'm drinking uh, tea, staying hydrated, getting plenty of sleep, that's very important. And also, trying not to stress over it because having stress uh, in your life uh, can just kind of lower your immune system generally. So, you know, what is gonna happen is gonna happen. We try to position ourselves as best we can for it. That's one thing that, uh, 
is kind of something that comes up a lot generally on prepping and preparedness uh, channels. People that are new to prepping and, and preparedness or you know just jump onto one of our channels, they think that we're all living in fear because we kind of talk about these things. Just because you talk about something, just because you prepare for something, doesn't mean it has to uh, terrify you, doesn't mean it needs to give you anxiety, doesn't mean you can't joke about it. You know, here on this channel, I'll joke about things and then you know someone will see the video years later when whatever I was saying years ago becomes suddenly applicable to people's lives and they're like, how can you be so crass about this? How can you like, you know, joke about this thing. It's like joking, keeping some levity in your life, uh, you know, not stressing over the, uh, things, not having that kind of toxic stress in your body. Uh, it makes you a better decision maker. It boosts your immune system. It's just all around a good thing. So if you're concerned about this stuff, try to take your concern and turn it into action. Don't just let it harbor in your body as toxic stress because that doesn't do you any good at all. Take your concern, turn it into action, and then be at peace with that. We'll see over the next uh, you know, 24 to 48 hours whether we break with COVID. If I haven't broken with it by Monday of this week, uh, this is uh, the first week in December when I'm recording this, I think I'm probably in the clear. Uh, and maybe it'll give me the opportunity to be a little bit more, um, uh, Bit, a little bit more of a pain in the butt with River's mom when she comes over and it's like, you know, this is the second time you get COVID and we dodge a bullet again. We'd really like not to get it. Maybe you could uh, be a little bit more careful yourself. We'll see how that goes. You can wish me luck. But uh, that's it. If you're interested in, uh, you know, protecting yourself and your own immune system, I know there's a lot of people going around right now and they're like, oh, people should get sick. It's good for you to get sick. Really? Really? Uh, you know, does the same go for like, uh, you know, bacterial infections? Like, should I be going out and like getting chlamydia so that I can like, you know, make sure my body's, you know, prepared for chlamydia or whatever? You know, people come up with some interesting uh, ideas about how, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can take that for what you want. But, uh, you know, for us here, it's nice not being sick. Uh, you know, we've had weeks and weeks, if not months of our lives that have been unlocked over the past several years because we have not been sick. We've been able to do things with that time. And uh, and I think that's a good thing. You know, you can make an argument that it's good to be sick now and then. It's good to get chlamydia and <laughs> yeah, chlamydia is kind of my go-to gross disease. Uh, but, uh, you know, or you can make the argument that it's good to be healthy and to keep your immune system up and to stay well. Uh, you know, you can decide which of those you think is the, the better life strategy. That's it, good luck and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.